So now y'all come into my kitchen. This is cooking today. Hi, welcome to Cooking Today. Glad that you're here. Happy Wednesday to you. We're making sweets today. I've got my mixer out, my batter bowl. It's a good day, right? I, I don't know about you, but I follow so many foodies on social media and it's really, really fun. It doesn't help you if you're dieting because you see all this great stuff come across your feed. But I love Instagram. It's so much fun. Um, my name is Unimaze on Instagram. If you want to follow me there, it's really a fun way for me to talk with y'all and communicate and share all kinds of fun things. But one of the things that I actually saw not too long ago scroll through my feed was a fruit pizza. And I thought, gosh, I sure love fruit pizzas, don't you? I mean, they're so good. And they've been around a long time where you just take a sugar cookie and you do store-bought and you press it out in a pizza pan and you buy store-bought frosting and then load it up with fruit on the top and cut it into wedges. Well, this is kind of what I'm doing today, except I'm doing a brownie as the base. And here's why, because Sam Hannon loves chocolate and fruit. It's one of his favorite little combos. He likes a little berry with a little chocolate on it. And he likes a little chocolate cake or something with a little bite of like a raspberry or strawberry or something. And so I thought, oh my goodness, wouldn't that be so good to do a brownie pizza with my homemade frosting that is so good. My family says you could put that frosting on anything and they would eat it. And then we're gonna cover it in beautiful summer berries, um, raspberries and blueberries and blackberries and strawberries. And it's really, really pretty. And y'all, it's so simple to make. You're just not gonna believe it. And it's a showstopper, it's beautiful. So what we have is a boxed brownie mix. And you wanna get the family sized one because we're gonna fill like a 15 inch pie plate or pizza pan. And so you don't wanna get the little one that only makes an eight by eight. You wanna be sure that it says family sized or that it fills a nine by 13 um, casserole on the back. And that's what I have here. And there are 12 different kinds of that. There's different brands. And then there's one that says um, dark chocolate fudge. And there's some that say milk chocolate and some that say chewy fudgy. It doesn't matter. Just get the one that you like, okay? So we have our dry mix. We have our oven. Oh, I said we had our oven preheated and we do not. So we'll do that right away to 350, preheated to 350. And then I am going to follow the directions a little bit on the package, but I'm gonna do a little bit of something different. And so here's what I do to my boxed mix. So we have a boxed mix and I'm gonna do a quarter cup of oil, okay? You wanna do a homemade brownie recipe? I think there's one in our archives that you're welcome to do. But what's so nice about a brownie mix or even a cake mix is it's basically the flour, the leavener, the salt. It's just been pre-mixed for you. So there's no shame in a box mix. Okay, so we've added a quarter cup of our oil and a half a cup of water. And then I'm not gonna measure, but I'm doing about a teaspoon of vanilla to my brownie mix. It just makes it taste so good because vanilla is my favorite bite in all of the baking. And then, you know on the box it says two eggs for fudgy brownies and three eggs for cakey. Well, we kind of want to do a little blend of both. So what I do is two whole eggs. So we're basically doing two and a half. We're going to kind of meet in the middle. We're going to do two whole eggs. And instead of doing two eggs or three eggs, we're going to do two and a half eggs. So what I do here is I just let the whites fall in and then I just discard the yolk. So that way we have two and a half eggs. It kind of makes it somewhere between cakey and fudgy. I'm a fudgy girl. Sam likes the cakey ones. Um, it is a thing in our marriage. We have figured it out. We've worked it out. And basically what it is is whoever makes the brownies gets to put it in, <laughs> gets to do the extra egg or not the extra egg. So if you're the first one to hop up and make the brownies, you're gonna get them the way you want. That seems fair, right? So, done that. 
I'm just gonna get my spoon or my wooden utensil here and stir that in. It's super simple. It's a little bit of a doctored up version of your box mix. And then what I have is an aluminum pizza pan that is about 15 inches, I believe. And we're just gonna spread, here we go. I was afraid if I got going soon, like too quick, before that powder was incorporated that we would be, it's happened here before. <laughs> I speak from experience. Okay, so we've got our big aluminum pan here and we do wanna give it a little spray with um, Baker's Joy because we do wanna be able to get up underneath here and you know wedge these out into bites. So I'm giving it a really good spray. And then when we come back, we're gonna spread this in and we're gonna stick it in the oven. We're gonna start on our frosting. Oh my goodness, the frosting alone. Praises. Come back, this is cooking today. Welcome back, we're making a really yummy fruit, brownie fruit pizza. You know, you've seen like the regular just fruit pizzas with a sugar cookie crust, and we are doing a brownie fruit pizza instead, and it is delicious. So all we've done is we've kind of juiced up, doctored up a little bit of um, a family-sized brownie mix, easy. And then we have greased our pizza pan really well and then we're just pouring this right in get your bowl scraper in there so you can really get it all out and then I mean it's virtually mud and so it kind of just starts to slowly spread but I go ahead and take my, my spatula here and spread it so that we have a little bit of a rim an edge okay and so what it's just like it's just it's just like the good part of the brownie that you know a lot of a lot of people like just that little tiny edge on a brownie like in a casserole dish where it gets a little bit crispy and then just beyond that it's tender there's a lot of that here look at all of that whole rim gets a little bit crispy it's really good and then the key is to try to get this as smooth as possible. I'm not really great at it. I've made this a couple times. But the good news is that even if it's not really, really even, it's gonna be covered in frosting and fruit. So you will be just fine. Okay, so there, I've just kind of spread it so that there's just a little bit of a rim. We don't want to go all the way to the edges, of course. And then we have our 350 degree oven. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, mm, I wanna lick that so bad. Okay, 350, this is going in just like this for about 20 minutes. And I'll be honest, there's not really enough depth on it even to, um, to do the toothpick test. You know, usually on a brownie or something like that, you, you know, you have the toothpick test where you do if the toothpick inserted in the center comes out clean, there's not even enough depth in that because it is so thin. It's only maybe like a half an inch thick. Um, you can't really do the toothpick test, so you really just have to put it in for 20 minutes and just kind of check it. Um, it looks a little bit dried out around the outside, and then it's set in the center, and then you have to let it cool completely, like entirely cool, before you can even move on to your frosting, um, which is fine, and it'll set up. If it's a little tiny bit goopy in the middle, it won't cut into a wedge, but it's gonna taste so good that nobody will care. And that's just the truth. Okay, we're gonna make our homemade frosting. We've made this on this show several times. And you should know how to make it and you should practice making it and get this frosting in your life somehow, okay? I have one stick of unsalted butter at room temperature. Then I have a half of a block of cream cheese at room temperature, and room temperature is very, very, very important. I am cutting mine a little bit short. It should be a little bit more room temperature than what it is, so wish me luck. But it's gonna make it really, really smooth if you have it at room temperature, and it's gonna incorporate really well. Okay, so we're gonna turn our, mm -hmm. there we go, it's gonna be all right. 
We're going to put that in and let that get um, incorporated in a little bit, kind of whipped. I'm going to go ahead and use this little bowl scraper again. And then while that is getting soft and kind of whipped and incorporated, all we do to this powder or to this um, frosting, yeah, that's getting good, is add some powdered sugar. I have about a, a box, which is about a pound of powdered sugar. It's really nice to get it in a box because it's pre-measured for you and you don't have to get in those big old bags and scoop it out. So I'm going to take my bowl scraper and I am going to get down in here because you know your beater just can't get quite to the very, very bottom. It's super important that you get this nice and whipped and combined at the beginning. I don't know if I can set that down in a good spot. At the beginning. So I got, yeah, that's better. So I've got that up and off the bottom. Mm -hmm. Okay. Getting nice and smooth. And then you want to turn your mixer off when you add your powdered sugar because otherwise it's going to be a cloud on you. So then here's my pound of powdered sugar. I'm just going to add in about half first. Yep, that's pretty good. Half there. And then I'm going to add in a little bit. You can do milk. I had a little bit of heavy cream left over from another recipe, and this is such a little guy, I thought I would just go ahead and use it. But you need a little bit of milk or cream. And then vanilla, of course. I love the vanilla. Have I said that already in this episode? I think I have. <laughs> and then on low, we're going to just let that slowly incorporate. We're letting about half of the powdered sugar incorporate into our butter and our cream cheese first. Then we're going to add the other half of our powdered sugar. We'll do that when we come back. Okay, we're going to keep on trucking on our delicious homemade frosting. And then we're going to check on our brownie when we come back. This is cooking today. Welcome back to cooking. Today we're making a beautiful brownie fruit pizza. We have a box of brownies that we've spread out onto a pizza pan and it's baking in the oven. It has about eight or ten minutes left or so. And then we are making our homemade frosting. And what I've done is add a little bit of cream cheese and some butter and then we whipped that and then we're adding in a pound of powdered sugar. And we're just doing that second addition of our powdered sugar into our mixer. And then this is really important. Oh, and we added vanilla. And I'm gonna do the littlest bit of almond. Only about a quarter of a teaspoon, just in the cap. I love almond so much. Like, love, love it. And then we're just gonna throw in a pinch of sugar, I mean, of salt, because salt is necessary in almost all sweet things, if you ask me. Okay, so slowly we incorporated the other half of our powdered sugar. Okay, oh, that waft of the almond. Mm. And then for a little color, because I just think it's so pretty to have the pink frosting, I'm doing a couple of drops of food coloring in my frosting. Now, we're going to mix that in. You want this to be thin enough with your milk or your cream, whatever it is that you're using. I added a little bit at the beginning, but we may need to do a little bit more here at the end. It needs to really be able to spread nice and easily because if it's too thick, it may tear the surface of your brownie and gosh, that would be heartbreaking, wouldn't it? So I, I think you're gonna have to kind of eyeball it. It can't be thick like Play-Doh. It's gotta be really nice and smooth that you can frost it. And I always suggest that you refrigerate this brownie pizza. And all that will do is even help set up your frosting a little bit when it's time to cut it. So even if it's a little bit thinner than you meant to get, you can throw in a little more powdered sugar or just putting it in the refrigerator will, you know, help set up your frosting. Okay. Oh, I'm going to have to taste it. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. It's so good. Okay, so what I'm trying to figure out is, am I spreadable? You know what? I'm going to do just for good measure. 
I'm gonna throw in a little tiny bit more cream, just the littlest bit. Okay. That just makes me have a little bit more peace of mind. You know what I mean? Okay, then I have our fruit. And what I have are just these little, you know, pints, half pints of the raspberries and the blackberries and then about a half a pint or so of the blueberries. And I rinsed those and then laid them out on this sheet pan with a paper towel on it so that it would kind of dry them off. They really need to be dry before you put them on your, yeah, on your frosting or otherwise they're gonna leave a little wet spot. And I'll tell you, this is gonna be best if you eat it pretty quickly, like right away. Here's one that I made earlier and I'm gonna show you how pretty this is when this gets on there. Um, It'll hold in the refrigerator a little bit, but all that fruit's gonna start to just kind of release kind of their natural, you know, juices and stuff. So it's not gonna stay beautiful for like two days. I think it'd be okay overnight. And even if you were gonna try to make this for someone or for company coming, you could frost your brownie. It just kills me to leave any of that on there, y'all. Ugh, so good. Mm, 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 mm. You could frost your brownie entirely, put it in the refrigerator, and then right before you um, want to serve it, you could put your fruit on. And then that way you could kind of have a little bit of help, you know, in advance. You know, if you needed to kind of break it up, I always like to give y'all tips like that just to kind of help you know how to fix it for people or for company if you needed to. Okay, I'm getting down in there just to be sure. Now, what I like to do, get my bowl scraper and then drop every bit of that right down in the middle of the brownie. And this brownie has been completely cooled, completely, completely. If you were to frost the brownie and rush the cooling, it's gonna just tear up and tear up and tear up as you spread that frosting across that layer, okay? And then all I have, oh look, there's just a little bit on the counter. <laughs> mm. Y'all, I'm telling you, if you haven't made anything else on this show or from, from this show, you need to make this frosting. It is so good. So I have a little offset spatula and I'm gently, I put it all right in the center and then we're gently, gently pushing it around to the sides and leaving a little rim, you know, like a pizza. We have a little crust showing. And then you get to do whatever you want with your fruit toppings. If you wanted to throw in kiwi because you wanted a little green, you could do that. You could just do about anything that you want. If you wanted to make it look like hearts or you wanted to make it look like flowers or you wanted to make it look like American flag with blueberries and strawberries or whatever, then you can absolutely do it. If you wanted to throw toasted coconut on top, which I was all very, very tempted to do as a matter of fact, then you could do that but it's really yours. So we're gonna do mine when we get back and we're gonna have this frosting all smooth and pretty. Looking good, our brownie fruit pizza. This is cooking today. Welcome back. We have just, look how pretty, smoothed out all of our frosting on our brownie and we've left just a little rim, like a pizza, just around the outsides. And then all you have to do is go to town with your fruit. Like I said, you can do whatever you want. I like to take a strawberry. I need to do this on my cutting board. I like to take a strawberry and cut it right down like kind of half wide, like lengthwise, and make a little kind of a flower in the middle and you only probably need five halves so like two and a half strawberries and of course you want to kind of get some that are uniformish in their shape and size and then I like to do a little flower in the middle aren't they cute and that kind of gives me a little bit of a focal point I don't know something to kind of look at on my fruit pizza and then I like to just fill it in all around randomly with our other berries. Look how cute that is. 
Ooh, isn't that fun? So cute. Then I like to just fill it in with my other berries, just here and there and all around. And then I put them on and then just give them the most gentle tap just to kind of get them set down into your frosting. And then I just kind of go around. It's so fun. Top it off with a couple of like cute mint leaves here and there. Do whatever feels fun to you and looks pretty to you. The good news is it's going to taste fantastic and you're going to love this one. I hope you'll try this one for summer. It's great. Love every bite of it. This is cooking today.